In the last part of the series, part 61, we examined what took place at the Council of Nicaea. We spoke about the different doctrines that were in existence leading up to the Council and what was agreed upon during this Council meeting. We saw that the major problem that came from the Council of Nicaea was the canons that became law of the Church. Through the understanding of the Council of Nicaea, we are able to properly understand the truth and separate it from the lies that people want to mix into this Council meeting. Now before we move forward in history, we need to solidify some of our understandings on the topic of Catholicism. I mentioned in part 59 that the majority of history that we will hear in reference to the church is actually Roman Catholic church history. And from my viewpoint, I don't believe that there's a strong enough distinction of the separation between Roman Catholicism and the way, what is mostly classified as Christianity. So we need to clearly understand the difference. Most people can identify that the Christian church is different from the Catholic church, but the majority cannot articulate the reasons why. So being that this is the History of Religion series, I want to make sure that this understanding is made as clear as possible. Now, before I begin, I want to make it clear that I am not against Catholics. This is not an attack on Catholics. I am not an enemy of Catholics. I am an enemy of Satan. I am an enemy of his perversion of truth his perversion of the gospel, and his goal of deception of mankind. What I am speaking about are deceptions and contradictions. This is not something that is exclusive to Catholics. We all have been deceived in some way over time. Some deceptions are bigger than others. I do not believe that all Catholics are evil. I just believe that there are areas of opportunity for growth. Most Catholics, just like most Baptists, rely solely upon their church leaders and never really question what they are really being taught in comparison with the word of Elohim. I believe that if most Catholics knew what the Catholic Church really taught and placed it in comparison to what the word of Elohim says, they would be obedient to Elohim's word and separate themselves from the false teachings. So if you're a Catholic, this video may be challenging what you have been brought up to believe all your life. But if you're a believer in Elohim, God the Father, if you believe in him and his word, you will let his word have the last say above man. And so this video is not about my opinions, but to show you clearly what the doctrine of the Catholic Church is and then what the Bible says about the same topics. And from there, you can decide what is true and then what is false. Let's begin. The number of Roman Catholics in the world are estimated to be nearly 1.1 billion. This is greater than nearly all other religious traditions. There are more Roman Catholics than all other Christian denominations combined and more Roman Catholics than all Buddhists or Hindus. The church claims that it traces its history to Yahshua the Messiah and the apostles. Then, over the course of centuries, it has developed a highly sophisticated theology and an elaborate organizational structure headed by the papacy, the Pope, the oldest continuing absolute monarchy in the world. Roman Catholicism differs from other Christian churches and denominations in its belief about the sacraments, the roles of the Bible and tradition, the importance of the Virgin Mary and the saints, as well as the papacy. The word Catholic is derived from the Greek word katholikos, which means universal. In his Catechus of 348, St. Cyril of Jerusalem said, The church is called Catholic on the ground of its worldwide extension, its doctrinal completeness, its adaptation to the needs of men of every kind, and its moral and spiritual perfection. Okay, a lot of words to just say they believe that they are the true representatives of Christ on earth. But the truth is that the Roman Catholic Church is just a mystery Babylonian religion in a Christian mask. Now, that statement is not understood without a clear understanding of the beliefs of the Roman Catholic Church. So that is what we will go over. Catholic doctrine stands upon four pillars, church tradition, church hierarchy, veneration, worship of images, and salvation by works. Catholics hold tradition to be equal with scripture, but actually their tradition often overrides scripture. They revere pictures, crosses, rosaries, and other aids to worship, whereas Christians worship the creator alone. Acts, religious activities, more commonly known as works, are held by Catholics to gain merit which earns them salvation through the church. 
Christians know that salvation comes only through the Son of Elohim, not through any meritorious works of our own. Now, they say if you want to tell a secret, put it in a book. Time and time again, we see that statement to be so true. The Catholic Church does not hide what they believe. They have placed it for the world to see and review. Though the majority of the 1.1 billion Catholics, I'm sure, have not taken the time to review all the Catholic Church claims. If you want to know the official position the Catholic Church takes on any particular doctrine, you can find it in their catechisms. A catechism is a summary of the principles of Christian religion in the form of questions and answers, used for the instruction of Christians. This book contains the entire catechisms of the Catholic Church, which was updated and first published in Latin in 1992 and published in the English version in 1994. It is the official statement of faith of the Roman Catholic Church. It is the Catholic Church doctrinal statement. I got this copy from Barnes & Noble for less than $10, I believe. If anyone wants to understand more about the Catholic doctrine, I encourage you to purchase this book and compare the statements with the word of Elohim, just as I am about to do in this video. There is a lot I can go into in regard to the Catholic Church, and if Elohim wills it, I will do so. But the most direct way of gaining understanding is to go through their doctrine and seeing how it aligns with the word of Elohim. If it does not, then it should be avoided at all costs. Romans chapter 16 verse 17 says, Now I urge you, brethren, note those who cause divisions and offenses, contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. Contrary to the doctrine which you have learned. It does not mean doctrine according to the traditions of a church or philosophies of men. It means contrary to the doctrines you have learned according to sound biblical teaching. So if you believe in the word of Elohim and then come across those who add their own ways and thoughts to the scriptures, you should mark them and avoid them. Colossians chapter 2 verse 8 says, Beware, lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Messiah. And there are many other scriptures like this as well. So let's go through the doctrine of the Roman Catholic Church and see if it aligns. Starting on the first page of the Catechisms, there is a six and a half page introduction from Pope John Paul II. It is entitled, Apostolic Constitution Fide Depositum on the publication of the Catechism of the Catholic Church prepared following the Second Vatican Ecumenical Council. A very complicated title. On the fifth page of the introduction, he speaks about the doctrinal value of the text. He says, The Catechism of the Catholic Church, which I approved June 25th last, and the publication of which I today order by virtue of my apostolic authority, is a statement of the Church's faith and Catholic doctrine, attested to or illumined by sacred scripture, the apostolic tradition, and the Church's magisterium. I declare it to be a sure norm for teaching the faith, and thus a valid and legitimate instrument for ecclesial communion. I emphasize this point first, so that you understand that this is not just a bunch of words by ordinary bishops in the Catholic Church. This was co-signed directly by Pope John Paul II, who ended his papacy in his death in 2005, succeeded by Pope Benedict XVI, who was succeeded by Pope Francis, the current Pope. Pope John Paul II approved it and declared it to be a sure norm for teaching the faith. It has not been redacted or changed by any Pope since then. There are 2,865 catechisms. Don't worry, we will not go over them all. For time's sake, I will highlight some of the major points. Let's go. Tradition is equal with scripture. The Catholic Church places the Bible at an equal level as their tradition. Catechism 80 on page 31 reads, Sacred tradition and sacred scripture, then, are bound closely together and communicate one with the other. For both of them, flowing out of the same divine wellspring, come together in some fashion to form one thing and move towards the same goal. Each of them 
makes present and fruitful in the church the mystery of Christ, who promised to remain with his own, always, to the close of the age. Scripture has repeatedly warned us against traditions and philosophies of men. A few minutes ago, I just read Colossians 2.8 that said that very thing. Anyone who places traditions and philosophies of men at the same level as the word of Elohim is outright wrong and clearly against scripture. But they even add more to it. Catechism 82 on page 31 reads, As a result, the church, to whom the transmission and interpretation of revelation is entrusted, does not derive her certainty about all revealed truths from the Holy Scriptures alone. Both scripture and tradition must be accepted and honored with equal sentiments of devotion and reverence. So they very clearly say that they do not derive their certainty from the Holy Scriptures alone. Case can be closed just from this one statement. I honestly can stop this video right now. The truth is that from scripture alone, we must receive the truth and instruction from Elohim. This must be our foundation. Psalm chapter 118 verse 8 says, It's better to trust in Yahweh than to put confidence in man. John chapter 17 verse 17 says, Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Let's continue though. Interpretation of the Bible is to be done only by the Pope and bishops. The Catholic Church teaches that only the elite can understand and should read the scriptures. Catechism 100 on page 35 reads, The task of interpreting the word of God authentically has been entrusted solely to the magisterium of the church, that is, to the Pope and to the bishops in communion with him. The magisterium is the teaching authority of the Roman Catholic Church, especially as exercised by bishops or the Pope, in case you didn't know what that word meant. Anyways, according to the Bible, this belief and teaching is completely false. It's how they keep the power in the hands of the few, and it's exactly why people believe the Bible was used as a source of control. It's because the Catholic Church taught that their only elite can understand it and interpret it. And that's why over time, the reading of the Bible was banned by the ordinary people. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13 says, Till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 20 says, Knowing this first, that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. There is not one scripture that supports this catechism. Not one single person has the say-so and dominance on Bible interpretation. If you are saved, a child of Elohim, then you have the Holy Spirit residing in you, and He will teach you. Not to say you can't be taught things by teachers, as this is a gift of the Holy Spirit, but for anyone to say that they are entrusted solely to interpret the word of Elohim is purely wicked. Now let's move on to Mary. Mary is sinless, a perpetual virgin, the mother of God, the queen of heaven, the co-redeemer with Christ. This is where we see the mystery Babylon religion come in, where the horror of Babylon seeps into this religious dogma. Catechism 491 on page 138 says, Through the centuries, the church has become ever more aware that Mary, full of grace through God, was redeemed from the moment of her conception. That is what the dogma of the Immaculate Conception confesses, as Pope Pius IX proclaimed in 1854. The most blessed Virgin Mary was, from the first moment of her conception, by a singular grace and privilege of Almighty God, and by virtue of the merits of Jesus Christ, Savior of the human race, preserved immune from all stain of original sin. Did you catch that? Mary was redeemed from the moment of her conception? What scripture says this? She was preserved immune from all stain of original sin? So along with Yahshua, they believe that Mary was sinless as well? That is ridiculous and far from scriptural. When reading the writings of the Apostle Paul, he very clearly speaks on the matters of righteousness and sin. He makes it clear that none are without sin. Romans chapter 3 verse 10 through 12 say, As it is written, There is none righteous, no, not one. 
There is none who understands. There is none who seeks after Elohim. They have all turned aside. They have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good. No, not one. Verse 23 of this same chapter says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of Elohim. This claim that they are making is ridiculous, but it gets worse. Catechism 966 on page 274 reads, Finally, the Immaculate Virgin, preserved free from all stain of original sin, when the course of her earthly life was finished, was taken a body and soul into heavenly glory and exalted by the Lord as queen over all things, so that she might be the more fully conformed to her son, the Lord of Lords and conqueror of sin and death. The assumption of the Blessed Virgin is a singular participation in her son's resurrection and an anticipation of the resurrection of other Christians. In giving birth, you kept your virginity. In your dormition, you did not leave the world. O Mother of God, but you were joined to the source of life. You conceived the living God and by your prayers will deliver our souls from death. Wait, by your prayers will deliver our souls from death? In giving birth, you kept your virginity? The Blessed Virgin? Um, Mary had more kids after Yahshua. Matthew chapter 13, verses 55 and 56 say, Is this not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? And his sisters, are they not all with us? Where then did this man get all these things from? Mary did not remain a virgin. But there's an even worse part to that catechism. And I'm not even talking about how she delivers our souls from death. Did you catch it though? It said, exalted by the Lord as queen over all things. In some Catholic Bibles, you can find a page dedicated to the queen of heaven. There are many Roman Catholic churches that bear the name Mary, queen of heaven. That's because the Catholics, Mary is the queen of heaven. This title goes back to the pagan mother goddess. You can find this title in role in the Bible as well but it was always negative. Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 18 says, The children gather wood, the fathers kindle the fire, and the women knead dough to make cakes for the queen of heaven. And they pour out drink offerings to other gods that they may provoke me to anger. Do they provoke me to anger? Says Yahweh. Do they not provoke themselves to the shame of their own faces? There are more verses like this. I will place them on my site. The link will be in the description box. I speak about this in my video about Easter as well. This is paganism though. The queen of heaven is the whore of Babylon. You see in Revelation chapter 17. And the Catholic church very clearly admonishes her as such. You must be aware of this. In part one of my series, I spoke about Catholicism's link to paganism and many Catholics came against me and said that they do not worship Mary. But that's only because they have not dug deep into all the teachings of the church. This is quite clear. I will add more catechisms to what the church says about Mary on my site for your review. But for sake of time, we will move on. Here's one I'm almost certain most Catholics know nothing about. Salvation includes the Muslims. Muslims deny Yahshua as their master and savior. They deny that he was the son of Elohim. So any believer in scripture could not apply Elohim's plan of salvation to them. This is quite clear to those who solely depend upon Elohim's word. But what does the Roman Catholic Church say? Catechism 841 on page 242 and 243 reads, The plan of salvation also includes those who acknowledge the creator, in the first place amongst whom are the Muslims. These profess to hold the faith of Abraham, and together with us, they adore the one, merciful God, mankind's judge, on the last day. Again, whose plan of salvation are they speaking of? It's obviously not biblically based on Yahweh's words. They are teaching that you do not need to come through the Son. They believe you can come to the Father through just believing in Him, and that is biblically heretical. It is blasphemy. Again, Muslims deny the deity of the Messiah. They don't believe him to be the son of Elohim, only a prophet, not the Messiah. 
But Yahshua says in John chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Just acknowledging our Creator does not suffice. It does not save anyone. James chapter 2, verse 19 says, You believe that there is one God. You do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. So just saying that you believe in the one true God does not separate you. Because even the demons do that. Belief in Yahshua is what separates us. Those who rely upon scripture should be seeing extreme red flags. The Doctrine of the Supremacy of the Pope Catechism 882 on page 254 reads, The Pope, Bishop of Rome, and Peter's successor, is the perpetual and visible source and foundation of the unity both of the bishops and of the whole company of the faithful. For the Roman pontiff, by reason of his office as vicar of Christ and as pastor of the entire church, has full, supreme, and universal power over the whole church, a power which he can always exercise unhindered. The Pope, just like all men, are wicked sinners, yet they claim him to be the vicar of Christ? Vicar is a person who acts in place of another, a substitute. So he believes he is a substitute for the Messiah on earth. That claim is blasphemous. Through these claims, he believes he is sinless and has complete power over the whole church, which is why the church went around conquering the world. It's much easier to say you are doing things in the name of God rather than in your own name or in the name of Satan. Colossians chapter 1 verse 18 says, And he, Yahshua, is the head of the body, the church, who was the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have preeminence. Nowhere does it say that he is passing this title on down to man. It's blasphemy. But this lie is held upon the scripture that says that Peter is the rock of the church. Peter is not the rock of the church. Yahshua is the rock of the church. Roman Catholicism also claims that Yahshua established Peter as the first pope. But this is a misrepresentation of scripture. And even if it was true, it still does not make Peter the substitute for the Messiah on earth. Again, it's blasphemy. But moving on, then there's baptism of infants. Infants are born again through baptism. Catechism 1250 on page 350 reads, Born with the fallen human nature and tainted by original sin, children also have need of the new birth in baptism to be freed from the power of darkness and brought into the realm of the freedom of the children of God, to which all men are called. The sheer gratuitousness of the grace of salvation is particularly manifest in infant baptism. The church and the parents would deny a child the priceless grace of becoming a child of God where they were not to confer baptism shortly after birth. There are so many people today that are not saved and do not have the Holy Spirit because the church has falsely baptized them as an infant. I get so many sincere questions about this. People that were baptized as a baby, should they get rebaptized? First, you will not see any scripture about infants being baptized. Not one scripture. This catechism claims that one becomes saved or a child of God by being baptized. It refers to water baptism. But the problem is that a baby cannot believe. They are not making the decision to follow the Messiah on their own. Someone else made that decision for them. That doesn't count. This is a personal relationship. No one can force it on you. The child must be able to believe in order to be saved. So if you were baptized as an infant or a child and did not make this decision on your own, you must be rebaptized and make the decision to follow Yahshua on your own. Parents, do not baptize your child unless they have made the decisions themselves. Do not worry about them as an infant or a child because they don't have the mental capacity to make this decision yet. Now there's a lot more to speak about, but for time's sake, I'll end with this last one. Again, I will put more up on my site. All sins must be confessed to a priest. Catechism 1493 on page 416 reads, 
one who desires to obtain reconciliation with God and with the church must confess to a priest all the unconfessed grave sins he remembers after having carefully examined his conscience. The confession of venial thoughts without being necessary in itself is nevertheless strongly recommended by the church. I mean, this is completely unscriptural. There is not one scripture that tells us to do this. This and infant baptism are just plain examples of how sacred tradition can be regarded above scripture. No priest can forgive you of your sins. He did not die on the cross for you. The priest himself is nothing more than a sinner. To call him father and to confess your sins to him is not taught anywhere in scripture. If you sin against a brother, then you confess to Yahshua and ask for forgiveness. This is how we are reconciled. You do not need an intermediary to come to Yahshua. The Holy Spirit is our intercessor. Look at these scriptures and note that none of these scriptures say confess to a priest. 1 John chapter 1 verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 5 says, For there is one Elohim, and one mediator between Elohim and men, the Messiah, Yahshua. Again, nothing about confessing the priest. Even calling the priest father is against scripture. Matthew chapter 23 verse 9 says, Do not call anyone on earth your father, for one is your father, he who is in heaven. I mean, it all seems pretty clear to me. Again, if you want to see more of the catechisms, I've listed them on my site. The link is in the description. There's so much more to say on this topic. A lot more to speak about outside of the doctrines. Going inside the Catholic Church, there are still different secret societies that exist. There are powerful orders inside the organization that have a very powerful stronghold on the world. It's just a topic that can be discussed on multiple levels and layers of deception. The point that I want to make clear within this video is that much of the doctrine that comes from the Roman Catholic Church is false and against scripture. The church places itself higher than the word of Elohim. It places its traditions as an equal and often more important than the scriptures. If you are under this doctrine, this may be very alarming to you and maybe you want to deny it or maybe attack the messenger, but it still does not change any of this information in this video. All of this information you can check for yourself if you just purchased the book. I'll put a link to it in the description box as well. I know people that are Catholics that have a sincere love for the Father and just write off the difference in doctrines to the denominational gaps. But that is not a true understanding of the issue. It's not enough to just declare a love for Jesus. You must also live and abide by his word. He seeks those followers who desire to worship him in spirit and in truth. One of the main issues with Roman Catholicism is the word of Elohim is not the priority in the church. There are other factors that are held in equal standing, and sometimes they are made the priority. They also believe that you can make it to the Father without the Messiah. If your desire is to please the Father, then you must denounce this doctrine and your association with this organization. I'm not telling you that you now must be a Baptist and start going to a Baptist or Pentecostal church. Today, there are layers of deception within those denominations as well. What I'm saying is that you must seek out a personal relationship with the Father through pure belief in Yahshua the Messiah. You must read your Bible on your own. You must submit to the will of the Father without having man as an intermediary for you. You must get rid of all idols and place Yahweh as the priority. It's His will be done. This is not done by just going to church, but being the church. Let His Holy Spirit guide you and let go of religion. It's not about religion, it's about belief, about your faith. So make your belief in him be solely based on his word and not man's traditions and philosophies. Make your belief in him set you apart from this world. Follow the way and remove yourself from churchianity. Yahshua is coming back soon. Make sure you are ready for him when he comes. Okay, thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please make sure to like it and share it. Share this with anyone that is not too sure about Catholicism. Share it even if they are sure about Catholicism. If you have not already done so, 
please make sure to subscribe to this channel. I upload every Friday. Don't forget to follow this ministry on Facebook and Instagram. As always, I would like to thank all those who donate to this ministry. Your love and support are an extreme blessing and truly helps me focus on what really matters. Thanks for listening to Yahweh's Call on Your Heart. Okay, thanks everyone for watching. I love you all.